Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about makeup minimalism and things that I no longer buy when it comes to beauty. I've seen the things I no longer buy video going around YouTube lately. Today I wanted to specifically narrow it down to beauty products and product categories of things that I no longer repurchase that maybe at one time I thought were absolutely essential. And if you are new here, I do have a series all about makeup minimalism that I will link down below. It is a series that I'm expanding on, so definitely subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. And without further ado, let's get into the list of all the things that I no longer buy when it comes to beauty. So the first thing on the list had to be cotton squares. I love skincare. Cotton squares, cotton rounds, we're gonna use the term interchangeably here. Previously, cotton squares, I would go through maybe two to four of them a day, and over the weeks, months, and years of your life, that adds up to so much beauty waste that can actually be replaced quite easily and quite affordably too. This year I made the switch to reusable bamboo cotton rounds. I got them on Amazon. I think the set has like 12 or 16. I use them with my micellar waters, essence, makeup remover, toner, and they do great. They don't really shed. They wash really well. I just wash them with my typical towel laundry every week. I will caveat this by saying I do occasionally purchase cotton balls, but those are strictly for nail polish removal. I don't think a reusable cotton square is going to be the best bet because it's essentially like a small towel and nail polish remover and the, the chemicals and acetone don't really mix too well. So that is something I maybe purchase once a year, once every year and a half, because a single bag of cotton balls lasts me a very long time. So I'm strictly talking about cotton squares. I have replaced them. Once you try it, you'll wonder why you didn't do it sooner. Number two on the list are mink lashes. The best lashes back in the day were mink lashes. They just had so much volume and drama and they had the longevity. You could use them 10, 20, 30 plus times and they were luxurious. They were a little more high of a price point and they just looked a little more glamorous than what was available at the drugstore. But nowadays, synthetic strip lashes have come such a long way and they look just as amazing. There's literally no reason to buy mink lashes moving forward. Now, while I haven't made the switch to totally cruelty-free beauty products, mink lashes are something I've stopped wearing in the last three or four years. I think it's just totally unnecessary because Synthetic lashes are available everywhere and they look really good. Back in the day, you know, the mink lash brands were like Lily lashes. And nowadays, everybody has a synthetic faux mink style. Some of my favorite brands of synthetic cruelty-free lashes include House of Lashes and Blafari Lashes. Blafari specifically is a locally based indie brand. So I will link them, of course, down below. But I just feel like mink lashes are a thing of the past. There's literally no reason to wear them. Even if the brand says, the, you know, the mink fur is ethically collected. I'm not really sure what that means. Also about a couple weeks ago, I had a encounter with a mink in the creek area by my house and it was just the cutest little sweet, most little innocent thing I've ever seen. Such a cute, special animal and I can't believe I used to wear mink lashes. Never again, never again. And again, like yes, I do have makeup brushes that have animal hair, but for something that's a replenishable, like a lash, you eventually have to throw it away and repurchase mink lashes are just not the way to go. That brings me into the next thing I no longer buy, which are makeup brushes. And this is gonna be not the same for everybody, but for me personally, I have a horde of makeup brushes. I've been on a strict makeup no buy since 2017, just only picking up things that I need to replenish in my collection. Unless I'm getting a very specific travel size brush, to fill in the gaps in my collection, I don't buy makeup brushes. I have invested so much money in my makeup brushes over the years. I have some great Sephora collection brushes, Hakuhoto, which are actually my favorite. I have nice brushes that are from the drugstore, like Real Techniques. I also have Sigma brushes, which are synthetic and really high quality for a great price. I own probably more makeup brushes than there are days in the year, but I don't really like washing them that often. So while my makeup brush collection is crazy, I never need to buy makeup brushes again. Eventually, yes, I could declutter some of my brushes and that is on my to-do list, but I'm not really buying any more makeup brushes because I've invested in such quality ones over the years. Make sure you're careful when you wash them and not pulling at the bristles or tugging them or running them under too hot of water. And I promise you, your brushes are going to last year after year. I've had a lot of my brushes, even my MAC brushes from back in the day, probably 10 plus years. So if you take good care of quality makeup brushes, they'll last you potentially a lifetime. The next beauty thing that I no longer buy are products containing carrageenan. Now this is gonna be a very specific to me kind of philosophy, but this could apply to you if you have any ingredient sensitivities or allergies, because beauty products have some crazy ingredients in them if you look closely, and 
what I've found over the years is that the same thing can go by different names. So make sure you note that. I have a very severe food allergy to carrageenan, which is carrageenan, which is Irish moss, Chondrus crispus, red moss. It goes by a lot of different names. And it's actually a stabilizer, thickener, and an emulsifier in products. You might see it in products like ice cream, or heavy whipping cream, or even deli meat. Cold cuts, Costco rotisserie chicken, almond milk, pretty much any of the specialty beverages at Starbucks I can't have. It's also in a lot of packaged processed foods, which are pretty easy for me to avoid, but it's always in the back of my mind and it's something that I always have to be two or three steps ahead on. And I've written about this at length over on my blog, ChelseaPearl.com. Beauty products can also contain carrageenan as, again, that stabilizer ingredient that helps kind of gel some of the other chemical compounds and organic ingredients together. So a lot of like hydrogel under eye masks, a lot of thicker, heavier skincare creams like La Mer, even Burt's Bees. And I suffer from eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis. So I can have a lot of adverse skin reactions. Ingesting it causes me to have anaphylaxis. So it's a very serious concern. And that's why I always have to look at ingredient labels thoroughly before I buy stuff and it prevents me from buying a lot of stuff. So it's kind of a good thing. <laughs> so even if I'm lured into the hype of a product, I will go through the ingredients and it's a quick, you know, black and white elimination knowing that, oh, that has something that's gonna upset my skin, it's out. You know those like highlight powders and face powders and eyeshadows that kind of have that gel touch? They usually contain carrageenan. So that's like an easy, clear cut decision for me. The next beauty thing that I no longer buy is lip liner. I can't remember the last time I bought a lip liner. I do remember the last time I decluttered my lip liners and it felt really good because they were all just sitting in a drawer, never being used. So when brands do send me like products for consideration, usually with lip liners, I'm less interested in them as a product category overall. So I'll usually put those aside in a giveaway, but for specific brands like Shades by Shan where they sell their lip products and lip kits with a liquid lipstick and a lip liner, I usually pick out the lip liner that interests me the most and stick with that. So maybe owning one lip liner is something that I find is reasonable because I use it so rarely. A clear wax lip liner would be a great option if you have a lot of lipsticks you like that tend to feather or bleed outside the lip line. And I really think you can get by with just one lip liner. You don't need to have it in every color under the rainbow. One nude lip liner to rule them all, you know? I feel like one color can kind of get away with everything. I would wear a nude lip liner under a red lipstick, like probably not vice versa, but definitely a nude lip liner could take you through all the colors of the rainbow. And if I do use it for the purpose of keeping my lipstick in the line, I think I can get by with just a single lip liner. Whether that's a nude, whether that's a clear, either way. All I know is that lip liner is just something I haven't bought in the past four years. And I'm pretty good with that. The next beauty thing that I no longer buy has to be nail polish. 2008, 2009, 2010, when everybody was showing like humongous makeup collections, I never let mine get that crazy. But one thing I did go a little crazy on was the nail polish. I love painting my nails all different colors of the rainbow, neons, glitters. It's just something I have less and less time for these days. When I do want to paint my nails these days, I usually opt for more classic colors that kind of go with multiple different outfits or occasions I have coming up. So like today, I have red nails. These are a powder dip manicure that I got at a salon. A salon manicure is something I typically only do a couple times a year for special occasions or for trips coming up. I love gel manicures. I'm new to the dip powder. So far, so good. But in terms of painting my nails at home, I usually only do my toes and I usually only go for like a really, really milky white pink because I love the way it makes me feel. It sounds crazy, but I love the way my feet look when I have a color like this on because it makes my skin look a little more bronzed and it just looks clean. It looks elegant and clean. It looks good with all of my open toe shoes. So I usually go for a color like this. This is actually my absolute fave. This is Sinful Colors Sinful Shine Gel Tech in the color Tutu Thrills and I love this. I wanted to specifically mention this nail polish in particular because the swatches on Walmart and Amazon and I think Ulta are totally wrong. It shows it as like a bubblegum pink and it's definitely more of a white milky muted pink. I pretty much wear that color on my toes year round and the only nail polish I will buy if anything are my base coat and my top coat and again only buy it like once a year or whenever I run out or once they become like too thick to use. So my favorite base coat is the OPI Nail Envy. It's just an overall nail strengthener that you can use on naked nails. And if you have dry, brittle nails that are always splitting, breaking, peeling, 
try this. And then the Out the Door top coat, really thick, glossy, kind of gel effect style top coat, and it dries really fast. I have like my quarterly manicure that I get in the salon, and then I have like my monthly pedicure I do on my feet at home. But other than that, don't buy nail polish. I just don't have the patience or time. I just know that usually when I go to a salon, I get like a classic nude, a classic pink, a, you know, pinup red or something in between. Occasionally I'll get the like chrome. I should also mention, I love press on nails. I did a whole blog post last year on my obsession with press on nails. Press on nails have come a long way since the nineties. Let me tell you, you can get so many different shapes and styles colors and nail art options nowadays. Generally speaking, they come with really good adhesive and you can also buy nail glue anywhere in case you wanna rewear the same pair over and over again. Yes, wanted to mention that. While I don't buy the nail polish itself, occasionally I will buy a press on nail kit. And the very last beauty thing I no longer buy has to be shave gel. Now, if you go back and look at my empties videos over the last seven or so years, you'll know that I had a very specific shave gel that I liked. So what's really interesting is that it wasn't even like a Skintimate or an Eos, it was a store brand shave gel that I was so obsessed with back in the day. But what I've come to the realization of over the years is that it's a lot of packaging waste buying all these specific beauty products for like very narrow use cases. And I could still achieve the same close shave using just like my regular body wash and a really sharp, you know, brand new high quality razor. So these days I just use like Dr. Bronner's Castile Soap. I love the peppermint one and I love the almond one. And if you watch my empty series, you'll see I go through those every so often. I love Dr. Bronner specifically because it's so concentrated. You get so much product and they have a lot of great scents. And I also love using them for washing my makeup brushes. Finding those products that have like the multi-use factor will definitely help you streamline not only your beauty routine, but also your life. It's just one less decision and it's a lot less waste. Okay, and I have one honorable mention. I know a lot of people are saying in these videos that they don't buy makeup wipes. And I was gonna include it in my list, except for I never really bought a lot of makeup wipes in the first place. Back in the day, I would buy the Equate wipes from Walmart in the black container, which were comparable to the Olay wipes. I remember like Nicole Guerrero used to use those back in the day and I really liked them for like easy, you know, makeup removal on the go, say when you're traveling. I never was a huge makeup wipe person in the first place. That's why I didn't really put it in this list. I really don't like that single use kind of philosophy with any kind of beauty product. I will occasionally buy them again for the purpose of getting my makeup off on the go, say while traveling or after the gym. So I still occasionally buy them, but again, it's like one pack per year. I really like the Yes to Coconut wipes and the Honest Company literally the unscented like almost water baby wipes and you can get these in the baby section and you get 72 in a bag these are over 99 percent water and plant-based the wipes from yes to coconuts are biodegradable if you can't quite shake your makeup wipe addiction go ahead and make the switch to something more biodegradable and plant-based and i think also keeping makeup wipe use strictly to the times where you don't have access to a sink or a fresh towel to cleanse your face with all right, friends, so that's about it for today's video. Those are all of the beauty things that I no longer buy. Now, I reserve the right to do a follow-up video for when I think of more things along the way. Definitely comment down below if you'd like to see part two of this video because I think I can definitely come up with some more things that I no longer buy in the world of beauty. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. I make two videos a week all about fashion, beauty, and travel in living large and little ways. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.